He's literally doing the videos that Pyro used to do. Ah, this video is called the YouTube Slop Economy. And it's, okay, it's made by a creator named Terror who has 455k subscribers. Bro, I'm not holding back just because you're 17 years old. You have 455k subscribers. I am not holding back. I'm sorry. I'm not. It's not like you have 50 or 200 or something. Hey, when you go on your YouTube homepage, does your algorithm look like this? When you watch the videos commonly recommended to you, do you often have a hard time remembering what exactly it was you were watching? Well, worry not. If you're watching this video, there's still hope. These are all symptoms of slop content. Others have covered the topic, but never before has someone given the world a look at the behind the scenes process. Also, those videos seem to keep mysteriously disappearing. This- Well, yeah, because they deleted it, and they delete them after they realize, wait a minute, I'm... I was wrong? Duh? Video will take you down the YouTube slop rabbit hole to explain how it works, how it baits you in, and how you could possibly get away from it. But as a starting point, what is slop? Why is it called that? And why is it bad? Slop is the blanket term used to describe low effort, mass produced content. Slop content on YouTube has a lot in common with fast food. There's a big market for both, it's easy and digestible, and they're both unhealthy for you. Just like obesity is a massive issue in America, empty, forgettable content is a massive issue on YouTube. On a conceptual level, there isn't- Okay, but why- okay, so why is it such an issue? I- I feel like- Okay, so Ray, for example, Ray, cool guy. He's actually a very nice young man, all right? But he was a bit whiny and like hoity-toity in his video when we watched it, right? If, if, if somebody wants to do low effort content, isn't that what YouTube was founded on? Low effort content? Like literally the bare bones of YouTube is low effort content anything wrong with daily content. In any market, you're going to find quantity and quality. And completely pushing for quantity has always been a valid and successful business model. The issue is that oversights and defects are more likely to occur when a product is mass-produced without quality control. I think the term slop largely comes from the fact that the research and execution is sloppy. Even in higher profile situations like Kendrick vs. Drake, where finding the relevant information is a lot easier, people like Pyrocynical, who don't remotely care or have any interest in the topic, will still cover it just because he knows it'll get views. I find it funny that Pyrocynical is getting all the heat from everybody who's making these videos. It is absolutely hilarious to me. They are always mentioning Pyrocynical. Oh, this is funny. This leads to a lot of, frankly, embarrassing oversights that Pyro completely shamelessly keeps in the public video to this day. Elite of Adonis, Adonis, Adonis Future and Metro's booming track. Other albums like Good Kid and Mad City, they actually unlocked a core cool memory of when Leafy was here, was still on YouTube, and he was like asking people to do like, you know, hiss in the comments section. Obviously, Slop isn't going to have the same creativity or production value as something with more effort, but that's by design. Slop channels are less about the product and more about the formula. Something they tend to do is find a simple and repeatable format that lets them stand out while not significantly adding to the workload. Much like the fast food chains, optimization is a key factor. Just replace the assembly line with a layer of branding and editors. For the longest time, gameplay commentary has been the easiest to produce, but that ease of entry also leaves it oversaturated. In recent years, more channels have moved on to using Ooh, I can't wait to get into a Cheeto. I cannot wait to go over Nick's VOD. I cannot wait. <laughs> Pyro, the king of bad haircuts. Okay, that is, if anything, that is the most true statement about Pyro I have ever seen. Pyro never has a good haircut. I agree with you, Alex. <laughs> face cams instead, something that takes a similar amount of effort while also letting them stand out. After all, what's more personal to you than your face? When it comes to sloppers, the hardest part is building the machine. Once everything's up and running, you can easily pump out one or more videos daily. Now, I think it's important to make the distinction that internet drama content isn't inherently slop. There are several examples of really well-constructed hit pieces, even to this day, and the best content drama has to offer is usually rewarded heavily.
Gee whiz. I don't know. What is this? What is this scene here? Tell me. What does this tell the audience? Are you one of those H bomber people? Are you one of those that points and go, You're plagiarizing! You're taking somebody's content! I hate you reactors! You come for reactors in this, don't you? I bet you come... Okay. Does he... Does he come after reactors in this video? Akiku, he's not saying H-Bomber guy is slop. He's not saying that, Akiku. Does he come after reactors in this video? Because if he does, that's why I'm saying he's showing H-Bomber guy. They have a tendency to show H-Bomber guy when they're coming after reactors. <laughs> Meaden, I love how the term H-Bomber people is being used like the label. <laughs> it's true though. Meaden, Meaden, Meaden. You, okay, wait a minute now. We have to have this discussion, okay? Meaden, the way they were, listen, after H-Bomber guy's video, okay? Who was all all up in everybody's con um in their comment sections saying you stole this content? You stole this content. You're plagiarizing. Bruh. They were. <laughs> the second H bomber exposed hit the South Tower. True meeting. <laughs> oh god. But to properly identify what is or isn't slop, I've put together a little checklist. A video is slop if the visuals are boring and uncreative with no clear vision, face cam and gameplay are both easy ways to fill in footage without thinking, causing different videos to be tonally and visually the same, the majority of the content is directly built off of someone else's, commentaries and re- Yeah, so? Again, I will tell everybody, I do the laziest content on YouTube. I do. And I- you know what? I'm okay with it. <laughs> to be tonally and visually the same. The majority of the content is directly built off of someone else's. Commentaries and reactions are fundamentally built on another piece of content. That way, you only have to do at most half the work, and you can let the original piece play in yours to extend runtime and provide context. Exactly! That's exactly what we do! 100%! I know I do slop. The videos don't bring any new information or perspective to the table. Oversights are common and can be noticed just by watching the video as intended. Oversights are common. The creator tends to meander on tangentially related topics. Oh, did you fuck up your editing there? Oh no, he d okay, no, he did that on purpose. He did that on purpose to, uh... I know Contact. why he did it. The videos don't bring any new information or perspective to the table. Look what he did. Oversights are common and can be noticed just by watching the video as intended. Oversights are common. The creator tends to- You see what he did? He left it in there. <laughs> to meander on tangentially related topics to extend watch time. Yes. AI. Yes, because that's how you react to videos. Because you add your own perspective, your own antidotes, your, um, you, you extend the conversation beyond what's in the video. It's called transformation, you little shit. I am so, okay. This is one thing that's getting irritating. Do you, okay. When we react to y'all's videos, do you want us to just sit here and let the video play? So if your video is 28 minutes and 26 seconds, do you want me covering the video to be exactly 28 minutes and 26 seconds? Or would you rather me take your video and create a conversation with it? What would you rather me do? Because that's exactly how you transform the content that you make and I react to. I'm just saying. That's exactly what, that's, that's called transformation. That's what you're supposed to do. I'm supposed to be able to take your content and create it and create, basically create a conversation about it. And I talk to my chat about it. I come up with, with stories that can relate to it. What do y'all want me to do? Just sit here and watch it? You want me to pull a Hassan or an XQC? Because y'all bitch about them too. What? And let me tell you something. 
for me personally, I'm actually one of the good ones. Because do you know in my description, I always put a link to the video that I reacted to? I mean, I'm pretty sure if you look hard enough, you can find examples of me not doing that. And it's either because the video is completely gone, or I just forgot. But no, I put I put the um the original link in my uh, video. I make sure not to copy their thumbnails, and I don't copy their title. Exactly, Jaded. I mean, that would cut my editing time in half. Just saying, that's true. That's very true, actually. And lastly, the most important factor to me, the videos aren't rewatchable and are almost designed to be discarded. To narrow in on that last point, there's actually a term for the opposite of this sort of content, evergreen. Just like the tree never loses its color, the content never really fades out of public relevance and can continue to be watched even years after its original publication. The assumption is that while Slop has the ability to be quickly mass-produced, evergreen content can be watched and rewatched until it does just as well, if not better, in the long run. Another thing to point out is that YouTube has always had tiers of content. This is something I commonly see misconstrued. Yes, old leafy videos were still slop, just because they were around before the term was made doesn't make a difference. Examples of evergreen content, like Content Cop, can also be found. The difference between then and now- Well, yeah. <laughs> You actually have to look pretty hard to find the content cops, but yeah. Now is that back then, the two types of content could easily coexist without competition. Leafy would get millions of views on his daily videos, but they'd never have the impact of a content cop. Nowadays, videos like that are getting increasingly rare. But honestly, like... Listen, I think there's space for everybody. I think there's space for everybody. You know, like, okay, you know how I was joking yesterday about, um, Operation Burnt Toast? Because Toastify is going to be making all the money next year based off of the, um, retrospectives of everything that happened this year. And Toastify was like, uh, no, you can't cancel me. I was like, honestly, Toastify, I don't want to cancel you. Because guess who's going to react to all your retrospectives? Me. Okay? So I need those retrospectives. I can't talk for all reactors, but for me, I'm either picking your video because the conversation that hopefully surrounds the video is interesting to me, or you're a creator that I really, really like your videos, and I really want to share it with, with my audience and have a conversation about it. There's room for everybody. Every, you mofos need to get off your high horses. I'm just saying. And even then, these good videos could still be directly competing with slop, just summarizing the points within them. Another thing I'd like to highlight is what I'm calling disguised slop. For what it's worth, most daily drama commentaries make it clear and obvious that they didn't have much thought put into them. They take a few hours, then they're posted. Disguised slop, however, consists of videos, usually taking the essay or documentary approach, that trick the viewer into thinking they're watching something good. Okay, now, I did see this part. I did see this part. Bro, okay. Now, I agree with Tommy. I, I agree with Tommy. You know, once you start becoming a content creator, you open yourself up to criticism. All right? But, and that whole punching down thing as an argument, I don't agree with that. However, I agree with Tommy. I kind of think that you should wait until they hit 1K. Unless they're a complete jerk and they're like, I don't know, like, a doxer or, you know, something like it, it really, really bad. So it just makes me wonder why you added a 643 subscriber person. They don't even have 1K, you know? I mean, maybe he knows them. Maybe that's it. with fancy editing, yet lack the writing that makes these videos memorable. This trend right here has to be one of the worst trends. There have been worse trends. This type of content tends to take the form of listicles, whether blatantly or subtly. The videos jump from topic to topic with no connection between them, no through line, themes, or deeper narratives to be digested. And that ends with a video you watch once, then never think about again. Deeper narr- Listen, sometimes people just want the rundown of what happened and move on. 
That's like watching TMZ. You know? Again, there's nothing innately wrong with slop content, disguised no. or not, at least when there's no better alternative. A lot of slop creators don't have the ambition to make better videos, but can still thrive on this platform by being ahead of the curve, quickly covering new drama and situations as they unfold, right. regardless of if their information was properly fact-checked. Ooh! <laughs> True, a Cheeto! I'm sorry, the way he acted with lyrics, I am all for what's happening with a Cheeto right now, not gonna lie. I'm all for it. I'm all for it. I don't really care for Cheeto or his content. You made a video critiquing Sniper Wolf for something, saying defendably she struck a channel. There was not enough information yet to say that she defendably struck a channel. <laughs> You're even going in here with this whole thing of like integrity and all this fucking shit. Like, dude, you gotta like, you know, dial it down a little bit. The issue arises when creators known for making good, rewatchable, evergreen videos turn to making vapid, flavor of the day, slop. Content no one will ever bother to rewatch or even think about again. No, I'll react to him. Listen, if they got to do with the subject that I want to talk about, I absolutely will react to them. To be honest, it's easier, it's kind of easier for me to react to um, a slot video than a two and a half hour video because the two and a half hour video, I'm at least pushing to go five hours on it because I like to double the time of what I talk about. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like to double the time of what I react to. Because I want to make sure that I'm not stealing your content. I want to make sure I'm actually transforming it. And they begin throwing together worse content, both for themselves and for their audience. I'm not that annoyed when someone who isn't skilled or talented enough to do better makes a lazy commentary video. But when someone with that talent wastes it by pumping out garbage instead of making something better, that's where I start to get a bit miffed. That okay, you're... You have this elitist attitude about you. You have this very elitist attitude about you. Just because you can do uh, pretty edits and you can write a pretty script, it doesn't make you any better than anyone else on this platform. And I don't give a fuck how many subscribers you have. I'm gonna be very honest with you. You get miffed. Who are you to get miffed? Maybe they don't wanna do that. For example, Friend of the channel that everybody knows, Nicholas DiOrio. He makes really, really good videos. Everybody knows that. He produces really, really good videos. But he's actually doing better on his second channel where basically he reacts to vids and talks about drama on a live stream and then cuts those up as VODs to go on his channel, and guess what? People actually re-watch it. And there's nothing wrong with that. Do I want a Nick video to come out? Absolutely, I love his videos. But you know what? I'm just as happy with his live streams and his VODs too. Cause what it boils down to is what makes you happy. If these people are happier not making these, these hard hitting videos with beautiful visu visuals and beautiful scripts written it's up to them whether they want to do it or not yeah it's it, booming a hundred percent it's just about preference that's all it's about that's all it's about it's just about what you prefer and you know what i prefer personality if you have the right personality I will watch your videos or your live streams, it doesn't matter. Because I'm mainly there for your personality. Honestly. If you don't have that personality, I'm only watching you when I need your content. Or something's going down. That's it. That's a waste of talent and potential content that I'm being deprived of. But why would these established and skilled creators intentionally choose to make worse videos? It's money. Obviously, it's always money. Yes. Yes. Yes, it is money. I am a glorious housewife. And you know what helps me be a glorious housewife? Not only the fact that I have an amazing husband and the best husband in the world. Sorry, ladies. But I have the best. Oh, and gentlemen. All right. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, but I have the best husband in the world. But my job here on YouTube helps me to stay a housewife. You know? 
But no, seriously, yes, this is my job. I went from working on cars and getting beat up by a car every day to being able to do this. I'm privileged enough to be able to do this. And this is how I bring in income into the house. Yes, it is about money. When it boils down to it, it's about money. Why did you make this video? Hmm. I'm sure you didn't make this video for money, huh? No. Why would you? <sighs> Worst video. It's money. Obviously, it's always money. So obviously the creators are driven to make this content solely with profits in mind, as there's little to no creative process there to begin with. But why do they do so well? You can say it's because the algorithm promotes it, but the algorithm just delivers what the viewers want. So why do the viewers watch it? I'm gonna be honest. All right, I'm gonna throw in my two cents because I don't know what he's gonna say. So let me answer that question what I think it is. All right? I think it's because people's attention spans are a lot shorter than what they used to be. So if they can get a quick recap of between 10 to 15 minutes, they'll get that recap. Honestly, that's what I think it is. I think people's attention spans are a lot shorter. Except for when it comes to live streams. And what I notice is my playbacks are always better on my live streams if my chat is still up. Hence the reason why, for, if for some reason I have to edit it and the chat has to go away, that's why I put my chat on the screen. That way the chat is still there. Because people like looking at the chat when they're watching a video. If it came from a live stream. Hence, now y'all have a chat on screen. Now, I have the freedom to play copyrighted music in the beginning because all I have to do is mute it. Yeah, the chat goes away, but y'all still see it. You know? First, the packaging. The thumbnails display as little information as possible, just enough to entice the viewer without revealing any specifics. Okay, I have to admit, I do hate, I do hate this style of slot video um, thumbnails where they all look the same. I do agree with this. I hate it. I hate those thumbnails. I hate those thumbnails. I don't think y'all understand I hate those thumbnails. Now, I am not the best thumbnail, thumbnail maker in the world, all right? I'm always getting criticism for my thumbnails. I don't care, all right? But I do hate the thumbnails where they all, all the thumbnails look the same. But unfortunately, that's what's grabbing people's eyes that's what make that's what's making people click the videos so i can't blame these people for doing those thumbnails you know a cartoon character on a blank background with some text or the subject of whatever the drama video is about in this niche the titles are vague not providing the viewer with any information on what the video is about besides the fact that there's a situation again a purposely vague what do you expect us to do put a put a put an essay in the title, you're only allowed 100 characters. What? Exactly, Thuman. Thuman, you have the comment of the day. Don't hate the player, hate the game. Literally. Don't hate the player, hate the game. Neutral term meant to get the viewer's foot through the door. And once that happens, Pandora's box has been opened. The Mr. Beast situation somehow got him kind of more. If this is true, this could actually be the end. This could be also baby whether I wanted to talk about Mr. Beast. And you just destroyed his career, and it's getting worse for him. I feel like my brain is bleeding after that. I feel like my brain is now bleeding because of that. What the? I'm not going back. I am not going back to that, okay? That made me feel increasingly uncomfortable right now. <laughs> I feel like, you know what I feel like? I feel like this guy knew that reactors were gonna, were gonna take this video and react to it. And he's doing little things just to get at us. Like how he did the uh, one part where he repeated it. Just to see if anybody picked up on it. I think he did it on purpose. Just to see if anybody picked up on it. He did that knowing that reactors were gonna be watching this with their, um, with their audience. 
and there was gonna be a reaction to it. I'm telling you, I think he made this for reaction channels. Yeah, I don't get the pigs, but they are cute. Oh god, it's not over. Okay, yeah, it's not over. Now. All of a sudden, your entire recommendations will be flooded with an influx of forgettable, interchangeable drama content. Different situations, yet always the same thumbnail, and always the same titles. But after viewing begins, why would anyone stay watching? This leads us to the next important piece of the puzzle. The algorithm needs watch time. And if they're making bad videos, people aren't going to keep watching. That's why I live stream. Listen, if you're a new up-and-coming channel, you know the best way to get your watch time hours? Besides getting subscribers, obviously. And you need to be entertaining to do this, okay? Not just anybody can do this. Live stream. Live stream. That's the quickest way to get watch time hours. Live stream. Live stream and be entertaining. You know how I entertain my audience? And this is for play playback people who, um, or people who are going to watch this VOD, all right? You know how I entertain my audience? I bully them. I yell at them. I have to cuss them out at least once a live stream. I have to. Because if I don't, they feel abandoned. They literally come here to be bullied. It's an amazing thing. Or are they? Over the years, the sloppers have found the perfect workaround. Drama. The reason a lot of drama slop does so well is because the viewer's collective interest in the given situation leading them towards it is always more persuasive than the lackluster content of the video begging them to leave. When you watch more Pegasus recap the Mr. Beast allegations, you're watching to see what Dogpack is alleging. The issue here is that Pegasus is an aggregator, with no insight or involvement. He isn't diligently looking through the evidence, he's repeating everything he sees in front of him, pushing the popular narrative because everyone else is. Okay, he's cooking right now. He's kind of cooking right now. I can't take this from him. He's kind of cooking right now. He is cooking. He's not lying about Pegasus. He's not lying. Everything he says is just a watered down version of a better and more entertaining video. And even the information he presents isn't double checked. In his third video, Dogpack accuses Mr. Beast CEO James Warren of domestic violence with no source, and Pegasus just repeats it without question, not even bothering to correct it in the pinned comment or description, even after Dogpack rescinded that point. Uh, there's allegedly domestic violence charges that were filed against him. Now, obviously, someone in the CEO position of Mr. Beast, in my opinion, should not have a history of ADV or psychopath behavior or drug addiction or potential harassment involving a female colleague, right? These are all extremely concerning allegations that need to be addressed immediately. I feel like you have to take some responsibility for the CEO of your company, right? This is sloppy journalism. And yes, journalism is the right term here. Yeah, no, I, 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 I agree in the sense of, yes, that is very sloppy if you're not going to, uh, look into things and you just repeat like it's fact what somebody said, you know, uh, Crash says Pegasus can't post a vid until Sensitive Society posts his, <laughs> I didn't know that was a lore. I'm gonna be honest with you, Crash. I did not know that was a lore with Pegasus. <laughs> People watch this content for the same reason they watch the news. They want to stay informed on the latest events and drama. But if the videos aren't entertaining and they don't even provide the correct information, there is literally no merit for these to exist. Content now that we have a good understanding of slop content and everything it entails, let's go through the life cycle of YouTube drama to examine the slop economy at work. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! I'm excited for this part. All drama starts from the inciting incident. Usually a creator is called out for doing a bad thing. Yeah. This first wave of backlash leads to people beginning to make jokes and memes spreading the claims, and within a day or two, the first wave of slop videos are released. With that current drama unfolding, now would be an ideal time for accusations to occur. People begin looking into the accused's history, digging for any possible behavior to be called out on. Streamers will- Oh my god! Is he literally showing the the booba stream? <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> and lyrics! Shots fired! Shots fired! We'll go over this as the situation develops, and sloppers might make an extra video or two if the situation is crazy enough. After a little while, a response to the drama is issued, and is either reacted to with an overcorrective defense or career-tainting humiliation, which is sometimes deserved, sometimes not. Then with the drama coming to a close, the sloppers throw one more video out to end things off, and a few months later, the disguised sloppers release retrospective documentaries of events, basically just summarizing what happened with little additional storytelling. A lot of- Do you know what that- what, what you're describing? You're describing 
the ecosystem. It's literally the ecosystem. This is literally what I'm talking about when we were joking about Toastify. Because Toastify does a lot of retrospective work. If he took the dramas that happened this year and made it's basically my way of encouraging him to make those retrospective videos. Because we had so many insane dramas this year. People are gonna people are gonna wanna look back at it and go, oh my god, I forgot about that part. Yeah, that was insane. Do you remember that time when like Mama Max and everybody went up there and fussed him out? Or how crazy that Mama Max drama was? People love watching that stuff. It's the ecosystem. It's almost like we we all we all have our part to play in the ecosystem. You know? That's all you're describing. And listen, 2024 has been great for drama. Every month there has been a major drama. We had like a two week lull. That's it. Of the time someone's coverage of the situation will also be called out, and several much smaller splinter dramas will occur. These usually aren't talked about as much since they aren't worthy of the news cycle, but smaller channels will continue reacting and responding to each other to propagate the slop economy. I find this regurgitation of content to be... interesting. Something even more interesting is that a lot of the time, that inciting drama doesn't really matter. In the early stages, a lot of it is just propelled by those making money off of it to keep the income flooding. Oh. I think we all know whose channel he's showing right now. Is this, this must be, this must be where Chud started getting angry. I'm sorry. You know what? I don't care what you say, kid, but Chud Logic has the thumbnail and title game on lock. Okay? I'm sorry. His thumbnails always make me want to click the video, and his titles always make me want to click uh, the videos. DK does an amazing job on those thumbnails and on those titles spreading around old, unrelated stories to keep the bloodthirsty drama viewer base satiated. A lot of the time, it actually gets pretty sad. You have streamers repeating the same few points on repeat, Ooh. desperately trying to keep the audience engaged and enraged while they're looking for something, anything else to say. They need to build up the importance of these situations because their livelihood literally depends on it. And if Are you upset that Chud Logic can go live for anywhere between 8 to 10 hours and keep an audience? That he knows how to deep dive live on air. He knows how to deep dive into situations live on air. Like, honestly, I wish I had that skill set like Chud Logic. He can start off with, like, the main video that kicks it off, and then he wants to go look into it. And he keeps his audience entertained the entire time. While also investigating what happened in the past. Like... Yeah, I don't know how Chud does it either. There's no way I could do that. There's no way. If it's a slow day, they're gonna pull in less money. But I mean, dude, this guy's brilliant. I hope he continues to make videos. I'm gonna cover lots of his stuff from now on. If it's an interesting topic to make. Right. He is absolute content gold, mate. So we've established that slop videos uh, suck ass, but seeing these established and respected creators... Who says slop videos suck, suck ass? Who, who said that? You? You said that. People love that con... If they didn't love the content, why are they watching? Who are you to measure if they suck ass or not? What? What? It's brilliant. I hope he continues to make videos. I'm going to cover lots of his stuff from now on. If it's an interesting topic to make. Right. He is actually content gold mine. So we've established that slot videos uh, suck ass, but... No! You established that! If they... If slot content... If slot videos sucked ass that much, then why are people watching it? Obviously, the viewers like it, or they wouldn't be doing it. You Get off your high horse, bro. Good God. Seeing these established and respected creators switching over to me is a lot more annoying. When a Cheeto or Pegasus make bad videos, no one really cares. They never made good videos to begin with. But when someone known for going more in-depth covers things poorly, it kind of damages their credibility. Everything up until no. now was basically just set up. This is a video about one man in particular. This is a video about a man I used to look up to. Someone who's inspired me. This is a video about Pyro Y. Well, to be honest, I pick you up. Hug you while rubbing you against- I'm gonna use this- Okay. I'm sorry. I gotta say this. What is up 
with you people making the slot content sucks videos and you're doing it because you're mad at a creator. Just make a video on that creator and stop giving strays to everybody else. Stop being a pussy. I am so sick of this shit. Raimundo did the same thing. Raimundo was pissed off at Moon. And he literally centered the video around Moon. Just call out Moon. Why does everybody else have to catch a stray? I'm over here in my little ass corner doing my thing. What did Chud what is Chud Logic doing to people? Why you gotta call him out? Why you gotta call out lyrics? What is he doing to people? Why why is everybody at why why is Turkey Tom catching a stray? If the video is meant to call out Pyro, then make a video about Pyro. Good God. You know what, Crash? You're right. Just make a diss track, you fucking pansies. True. They don't. Crash, you're so right. People can't understand focusing on one person. Just focus on one. Make your hit piece. And you want... Y'all want to bash drama content, but yet you want to make a drama content video. What? Oh my God. Oh, you pretentious little shit. This video to address the allegations made against many believe that the term slop originated from him to begin with. I personally first heard it okay. thrown around on an episode of his podcast, TBH. <laughs> I, I like to imagine it's, it is a natural trough of slop and just the little piggies running up to the trough. Pyro is someone who used to be known as a Leafy clone, riding the same wave that Leafy used to come to prominence. But over the years, he would slowly shift from that image by making increasingly higher quality videos, both his deep dive game reviews, as well as by refining his general commentary videos. He was someone capable of achieving a level of humor while still being able to be taken seriously, something I myself am trying to achieve. And he- You're not achieving it. But I mean, obviously you're doing something right when you have like, what was it, 455,000? Obviously you're doing something right, but not everybody's going to do videos like you, bro. I mean, I, I hate that pretentious shit. If you don't do it the way I do it, then you're wrong. No. What? He was highly rewarded because of it. While in his gameplay stage, he was the follower. In his more long-form content, he was a pioneer. Eventually, he would solely commit to the long-form game reviews, unfortunately leaving his more comedic slanted commentary videos in the past. Do you think maybe he got tired of doing it? Maybe? This gap in his dichotomy then sparked the creation of Pyro Live, a second channel that started as stream highlights before slowly shifting and evolving into a daily commentary channel. In a lot of ways, it's the same as he's always done, but something's changed. The video lengths have bloomed from 10 minutes to over 20, he spends several minutes per video rambling about unrelated topics, and even some of the topics themselves are just ass. He clearly doesn't give a shit about what he's talking about, so misinformation commonly slips in, whether he doesn't know the full extent of a situation or just other obvious oversights. Wait, what? Oh shit, I didn't know he did that. Many fans have seemingly diluted themselves into thinking it has to be this way, that there's no better alternative, and cope by saying he needs the numerous slop channels to fund his good videos. Now on its face, that logic is fine. He clearly spends a lot on commissions, both for his main channel and also other means. Personally, I don't think he's in a bad financial situation with his $5,000 PS5 shirt and $20,000 a month on commissions for personal use, but the easy claim to make is that just because he's making these videos for money doesn't mean he shouldn't be criticized when he gets things wrong. I do think- No, I agree. If somebody gets something wrong, you know, call them out on it. A uh, perfect example. When I um, reacted to um, uh, Paige's video on Rosanna, right? I didn't pick up on that she had said that um, Jake Weddle didn't get anything besides that 50K. I didn't pick up on it, all right? Because I'm going to be honest. I thought Jake Weddle only got that 50K. And somebody in my comment section was like, hey, Paige got this wrong. So what did I do? I was like, all right, let me go look. And I went and I, um, I researched it. And come to find out, they were right. So what did I do? I added it to the description because it wasn't a big part of the video. So I didn't feel like I needed to take it down or anything. It wasn't like, you know, a huge thing. Right? I put it in the description and I underneath their um underneath their comment I, I edited my original comment. It was like, you know what? I looked into it and you're right. 
Apparently, Jake Weddle did get paid the uh, days that he was there. And Jake Weddle worked for Mr. Beast on a lot of projects. He worked for Mr. Beast. So yes, he did get paid more than just that 50K. Yeah, so when somebody gets something wrong, yes, you should say something about it. 100%. There's nothing wrong with that. I think it's respectable that, for the most part, he tries to avoid talking about more serious situations. It's better to spread misinformation on something that doesn't matter, but it'd be even better to see no misinformation at all. A little extra effort goes a long way, even if it is for slop content. A lot of people seem to have forgotten what Pyro's best commentaries were like. He would build a unique atmosphere around the topics he covered. He'd actually buy Ninja's book or try to meet Morgs. His video about Karens, for example, had a House of the Dead inspired intro, which separates that unique video from all the other videos on his channel. And the same can be said with just about every other video from that era. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know Pyrocynical's content. I can't watch him. I can't watch him. The only way I can watch Pyrocynical is on the TBH podcast. Literally. I, I, I just don't find him entertaining at all. And those videos were great. Certifiably not slot. You know what, Ninja Style? I agree with you. Bro made a back in my day video. Yeah, I agree. I could still go back and rewatch them today and have the same enjoyment I did in 2019 and 2020. It's evergreen. And this effort was rewarded with millions and millions of views per video. It's easy to forget now, but Pyro didn't just wake up one day with 5 million subscribers. He made videos to earn it. I'm not saying he can make videos on this level every day for Pyro Live, but incorporating elements of the higher effort format, even just for a video or two, will do a lot of work to make the videos stand out again. And maybe the views will reflect that. But instead of anything memorable, he just needs a situation to be crazy. You sound like a disgruntled fan. Why are all these videos just whiny babies? Why are all these videos... Oh my god! What is wrong with y'all? Y'all are just a bunch of whiny babies! I mean, true ninja, he is 17. Alright? So, I mean, I expect the wine. Alright? I expect the whole wine and cheese platter. I get it. Oh no, it's not the content I like anymore. Then stop watching. Exactly, Olivia. Exactly. That's exactly it. If you don't like it anymore, then don't watch it. Find another content creator to watch. Listen, I may stop reactions one day. Like, for example, broadcast. We used to do reactions all the time. I got tired of doing the reactions there because I do reactions here. And I was getting I was getting burnt out on it. So what do we do? We started bringing people in and doing um, interviews and stuff. Because I got tired of reaction content. Because I do it here. One day, I, I may decide to stop doing reaction content one day. And actually go back to what I used to do, where if I did reactions, it was for deep dives. You know? I might get back into deep dives one day. But it's up to the content creator. It's called YouTube. The you being the most important of the you too. You do what you want as long as you're in TOS. But you do what you want on your channel. All the issues I have with Pyro's approach to slop tent can be found in one situation. A microchasm that's reflective of almost all of the problems in his entire operation. And yes, that situation is insane. It all started when the YouTuber Flazefire made a video called The X Situation Is Why. It's a video that, on top of being very well put together, is also very, very blunt with its criticism. He points out why this type of content is bad, makes fun of everyone doing this content, then he himself becomes the example of what to do instead. It's a well-edited, well-written, and hilarious video. And all of this material is condensed to 7 minutes and 54 seconds. I'm gonna be honest with you, by the looks of that video, I probably wouldn't watch it. Because that looks way too ADHD brain for me so short that the video can't even play mid-roll ads. He lost money by choosing to do this, but not adding those six seconds when he so easily could have really Se hammered home the point. Seven seconds. Seven seconds. Misinformation. Seven seconds. Not six. Seven. Seventeen years old and you don't even know how to do math. That's what a good reactor does. You see that? I caught it. I caught it. Exposed. You have been exposed. You don't know how to do math. It's seven, not six. <laughs> and Stan, look, he failed math class. He still has next year. <laughs> I mean, true though, true.
cost money by choosing to do this, but not adding those 6 seconds when he so easily could have really hammered home the point of the video. No one could possibly claim that this was slop because it wasn't a profitable venture. True sloppers would never even entertain that thought. So this video captures Pyro's attention, and he does a reaction to it on his Pyrocynical TV channel, a stream highlights reaction channel that re-uploads highlights of segments taken from his streams. I was curious to see Pyro's reaction to what he says. It's a video that takes a very aggressive stance against slop, and as someone who formerly made good videos on a regular basis, maybe his worldview and experiences on YouTube can provide some insight into the slop mindset. Then, I watched the video, and it was awful. That's why I called it slop, because it's garbage content. Videos need to be profitable on the slop channel. Yeah, that's the point, really. That sucks. Like, no one cares. I don't want to hate the LGBT because this guy's gay. <laughs> that's funny. First of all, before even getting to the reaction, the Pyro TV channel is the third channel for a reason. It makes Pyro Live look like good content. With his reaction, the- Who cares? Oh my god. If I hear this argument, what I think he's going to say one more time. I may actually lose my mind. I may actually lose my mind if I, if he, if, okay. All right, hold on. The video goes from less than eight minutes to nearly 50. From the outside, it's that's good. a good thing. He clearly has to be adding to the original content to get it that long. The issue comes in how that time is filled. For a lot of the video's runtime, he gets distracted with unrelated donations and goes on tangents that have nothing to do with the video he's reacting to or any of the points brought up in it. There's nothing wrong with this happening on stream. After all, you want to give the people their- Okay, to be fair, to be fair, when we clip up the VODs, we take all that out. Like when I'm talking to the audience, we keep the we keep in the vod when I'm talking to the audience about the subject. But like when I get one guide unrelated, we cut that out. Or if somebody gives me a donation that's unrelated, we cut that out. I don't keep anything that doesn't have to do with the video in their money's worth. But when you're re-uploading this to a YouTube video, these constant distractions become grating. People are watching your reaction to see how you react. Literally no one cares what some random donator has to say while trying and failing to be funny. Okay, but to be fair, to be fair to Pyrocynical, right? The video was 7 minutes 53 seconds. He put down it <clears throat> he put it in video form at what what was it? 49 minutes or 59 minutes? I can't remember which one it was. All right. Okay. I'm pretty sure at 7 minutes, 53 seconds, let's just move it up to 8 minutes. I'm sure within that hour, I would hope that at least 16 minutes was the video and comments on the video. If it was, then there's your transformation. Maybe he kept the extra stuff in there because his audience likes watching the extra stuff. But within that video, if he actually did 16 minutes worth between 8 minutes being the video and 8 minutes of commentary on the video and related to the video, then there's your transformation, even though he added the rest of it to it. There you go. Simple math, which we know you can't do because you don't know the difference between 6 and 7. Because if you upload a video at 7 minutes and 59 seconds, you're still not going to get mid-roll ads. You have to go 8 minutes or above. Thank you. I'm here for the people. Sloppy boy, little slopper, sloppy slopper, hopper, topper, bopper boy. Yeah, you are my special little pig. It's the exact same psychology as the drama slot from earlier. The interest in seeing Pyro's reaction is enough to trick the viewer to keep watching through all the fluff. The easy solution is to get one of his 20 editors to cut out the dead space. But that costs a little extra money. If he does that, maybe he'll have to spend less money on commissions every month. But through the filler and the donations and watching a critical video for some reason, the talented Pyro I grew up watching is still in there somewhere. Maybe he can really use his decade of YouTube experience to give us some insight. How does he respond? to the claims about slop content. He's sadly right. He is sadly right. And you can't make the slop shorter because if you make it shorter, you get paid less. I mean, I'm definitely guilty of that as well, though, in the sense of just like regurgitating information. I am chained to the slop mill. Oh, really? You know what's funny? This is another thing I think is funny about this sl the, the slop content call out that I've seen so far. Every single person that they're calling out says that they do slop content and they know they do it. It's like you're literally pointing and yelling at a bunch of people who are looking back at you going, yeah, I do slop content, and I, I already say this all the time. I do slop content. What's the big deal? It's what I do. Why are you yelling at me and pointing your finger? 
I already know what I do. I say I do it all the time. Sligan says he's still in there somewhere. Bruh, just say you missed the old content and move on. Period. Thank you, Sligans. Yes, he is whining. He is literally having a hissy fit in video form. What? Jesus. Really now, so he's just fully aware that the majority of his output is complete and utter garbage, yet he chooses to do nothing about it. Something that annoys me is that most of the viewers actually respect his honesty. He may be making shit, but at least he's open about it. No, if you know you can easily improve, you should be criticized harder. This no! Phew! Phew! If Pyrocynical wants to make slot content, then let him make slot content! Just let him do it! Who are you to tell somebody what to do on their goddamn platform? Who are you? Are you the god of YouTube? You can give suggestions to people all day long. But what it really boils down to, if somebody is going to do what they want to do on their channel, you may or may not agree with it, but what it boils down to is, it's their channel! And if Pyrocynical is happy making the shit that he's making, then let him do it. It's none of your fucking business. Move on. You sound... Bro, you sound parasocial as fuck right now. What? Good God. Yes, Sliggins, I missed the old Pyro. The non-slop Pyro head ass. True. Good, g bruh, you need to stop. You are whining way too much. I need you to stop. This is embarrassing. This coping gives Pyro the leverage to continue carrying this self-defeating mindset, admitting that the content he makes and endorses with his brand is terrible, yet he'll never bother to change because people aren't pushing him hard enough on it. And when they do, he concedes, doesn't bother to improve, and they respect that. In a lot of ways, it's his channel. He can do whatever he wants. As long as it's within TOS, he can do whatever he wants. Bro. Pyro and his fans are the same. He doesn't value his slop content, so why should the viewers? A lot of Pyro's more dedicated audience really seems to detest the modern direction he's taken. The top comments of nearly every video are actively against him, making deprecating jokes and comments at his expense, almost like a punishment for continuing to post these videos. Yet, they keep watching. A lot of people seem to only be watching the videos because of the connection they already had to Pyro's work. He made videos in the past that emotionally resonated with them, or made them laugh. And because of that, they feel this impulse, almost like Stockholm Syndrome, to stay around him like they owe him something, even when the content itself actively suffers because of it. But the comments aren't always complete drivel. I completely figured this out. This is a cry for help to Pyrocynical. He desperately wants Pyro's attention. Olivia, uh, right? This guy was in kindergarten when when I watched Pyro. <laughs> True. <laughs> oh my god, no. No, you sound like you sound like a disgruntled fan. This is not a good look. No. Holy shit! You're going down the path to become an anti. Don't do it, kid. Don't do it. Walk away. As an experiment, Pyro did try getting his editors to put more work into certain game review videos, releasing slightly less polished main channel adjacent content. While they didn't do as well view-wise, because you're uploading gaming videos to a drama channel, the comments were a lot more genuine and positive relating to the topic and themes of the videos, because they recognized that there was an amount of time and effort put into these, and they deserve to be taken more seriously. And yet, he still chose to return to the slop, because on average, they got more views than his higher effort content. We tried doing different content, like, we put a couple of days into this video, and no no one cares, so it's like, what's what's the fucking point? If you're mass manufacturing a defective product, you fix the assembly line. But when that defective product is still purchased by the consumers, there really isn't a reason to fix it, is there? In a situation like Pyro's, I understand why he's so willing to fall into complacency. He's a big YouTuber now, without anything more to prove. He doesn't have to try anymore for the vast majority of his content because he's already done that work, built that audience, and built that machine. And if it continues being profitable, he has no motivation to improve. Honestly? In today's economy, 
You know, bread, a loaf of bread being $5 now. Eggs being crazy prices depending on when you walk in one day, the eggs can be $1.50 and the next day they'll be $3. Why would he change? If it brings in the money, why would he change? Why would he? In today's economy, why would he? Exactly, Chris. Get that bag, Pyro. Exactly. Why is he f***ing psychoanalyzing Pyro while complaining about his content? As if the answer is that Pyro is demotivated, dude. Okay, while Pyro is demotivated, dude, he needs money for the good videos. Yes, there you go. All right, boom. Slop does make money. He can make better videos. He has made better videos. He just chooses not to because it's easier and he's being rewarded for it. The fans don't care. Thank you, Cry. They just want background noise. And they're willing to fall into that same complacency. The same mindset Pyro holds to his being profitable, he has no motivation to improve. He can make better videos. He has made better videos. He just chooses not to because it's easier and he's being rewarded for it. So what? Oh my God, man. You... You sound so elitist. I hate it. I absolutely hate it. You sound like if people don't make long form videos like you, they're trash. You're kind of shitty. Literally, you're shitty. Good God. The fans don't care. They just want background noise. And they're willing to fall into that same complacency. The same mindset Pyro holds towards the same videos on his own channel. They're the same. In my opinion, slop content is some of the worst content that's allowed on YouTube. Obviously there's worse- Allowed? What do you mean, allowed? Wait a minute. I don't like that. What? In my opinion, slop content is some of the worst content that's allowed on YouTube. I... I don't know what to think about that. What do you mean, allowed? Obviously there's worse stuff, but it breaks terms of service. It lands firmly in the middle of the bell curve, which makes it too consistent to not be laughed at, yet not good enough to be memorable. It takes up this completely empty black hole in your brain. I think Flacefire actually put it best in his video. Even after watching an entire video within this genre, I can't recall the title the thumbnail, or even what the video was about. If there's one word you can use to describe slop, it's shameless. They don't care when they get information wrong, they don't care that their videos aren't entertaining, and they don't care about being forgotten. They only care that they're pulling in money. It's so ironic how often I see people- Now, I will say this. I will say this. I will say this. He is right about this part. He is right about this part. Slop, it's shameless. They don't care when they get information wrong. They that part right there, that is a problem with some, some slop making YouTubers, all right? A lot of them don't care if they get something wrong. Not everybody, not everybody, but some of them and the one, but here's the thing, the ones that purposely or not purposely, but the ones who get it wrong and don't rectify it, they get called out. That's what the commentary community is for. There is a whole ass community based on calling people out. That is the whole purpose of this community is to call people out. What? They don't care that their videos aren't entertaining and they don't care about being forgotten. They only care that they're pulling in money. It's so ironic how often I see people constantly complain about TikTok, yet go on to watch hours and hours of forgettable, nothing content on a day-to-day -day basis. And I know because I've been there. One of my biggest- You should go back. Wherever you were before, you should go back. Guilty pleasures on YouTube is watching Minecraft hardcore content. I've complained before about how all Minecraft content is the same, in terms of style, topic, and presentation. The only way you can tell these channels apart is by the skin on the thumbnail. And the videos themselves aren't memorable, a lot of the same problems as the videos discussed earlier. And yet, on occasion, I find myself watching these videos, usually in the background, passively wallowing in the slob. And I get it, it's comfort content, both for the fans watching and the creators making it. The viewers always know what to expect, and the creator always expects the videos to do well. But there's a problem here. A personal problem, but maybe one you share as well. Never in my creative process am I more uninspired, discouraged, and disassociated from the creativity needed to make a good, memorable video. 
There have been points where I've genuinely believed I had memory issues because of how interchangeable and forgettable these videos are. When there's no excitement in the content you watch, it's hard to get into the headspace to be excited about what you're making. He's literally- yes. Yes, Corky. He he's literally wallowing right now. Zach says, oh, I get it. He's in that phase the youngins get into where everything is trash to them and no one's working hard enough to entertain him because it's not enjoyable anymore. I mean, maybe. And that's true. Minecraft, Minecraft content is for kids. I don't know how anybody can watch the Minecraft shit. Not gonna lie. And I actually agree with you. He has a short attention span is what he's saying. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. Well, these videos are. When there's no excitement in the content you watch, it's hard to get into the headspace to be excited about what you're making. I imagine it's even harder to be constantly surrounded by drama content. Not gonna lie, this whole section that we're in right now, this whole section starting at 22, 26 to here, this little whole little chapter is very very forgettable because it's very boring i don't care what you're flashing on the screen this part is so boring literally if your entire feed is an echo chamber full of negative videos about bad people doing bad things it's easy to fall into it it was a poor music choice in the background because the music makes me want to fall asleep to let it slowly consume you until all that's left is a more pessimistic person Watching other people's videos is a big part of my creative process. To me, there's nothing more entertaining and rewarding than watching a video and seeing a noticeable change within yourself because of that video. The best- Oh wow, he just flashed H Bomber guy, gee. ...and rewarding than watching a video and seeing a noticeable change within yourself because of- Yep. It's so funny, they always throw in H Bomber guy in there somewhere. ...of that video. The best content on this site changes you as a person, and that's a beautiful thing. Something we're only going to see less and less of in the following year. You know what I'm starting to feel like? I'm starting to feel like the slop content call-out videos are actually becoming slop content because they're all saying the same shit. It's like they're taking each other's points, but then they're going to put it towards another creator. Because people would rather be comforted than confronted. To be coddled than to be challenged and creators that, in distant memory, were fucking great, couldn't care less about actually satisfying the people watching because those people only want to watch garbage. Wait, did you hear how his how his inflection was when he said that? Wait, did you notice how he changed up? Gonna see less and less of in the following years because people would rather be comforted than confronted, to be coddled than to be challenged, and creators that, in distant memory, were fucking great, couldn't care less. You are such a parasocial fan. You are literally a disgruntled fan. You literally made a whole ass video about slop content because it's in fashion right now. Just to get it pyrocynical because you were a fan. This has got to be one of the saddest things I have ever seen in my entire life. You literally scripted out a video because your fifis are hurt. Oh my god. Lele, he is acting like an ex-girlfriend. Yes. Yes, he is. He's acting like an ex-girlfriend. 100%. Oh. <sighs> ...less about actually satisfying the people watching because those people only want to watch garbage. So how do we fix this? There are always going to be creators putting time and effort into their videos, just like there will always be creators pumping out slop. But ultimately, the reason slop even exists is because it's more profitable than making good videos. It's just the optimal business decision. Pyro even says it himself. So, you want to stop creators from pumping out slop? Stop watching it. Raise your standards and these creators will be forced to raise theirs too. As consumers, if we want better content, we have to boycott. So next time you see a video called the doo-doo fart situation is shitty, or whatever other collection of vapid, meaningless words, all you have to do- WAIT! They were able to put that in their title? What is going on with YouTube? Y'all are allow allowing the F word. Y'all are allowing people to put, um, no. Was it, was it fuck? That you were allowed to put in, um, Super Chats now? But you could put shitty in a title? I'm sorry. I noticed it and I was like, hold on, wait a minute. When, when were you able to do that? Oh, I think it's fake. 
Okay, I hope so. Because there is no way you could put that in title. Okay, makes sense then. I was like, hold on, that makes no goddamn sense. Video called the doo-doo fart situation is shitty or whatever other collection of vapid meaningless words all you have to do is hit the three dots and press do not recommend channel over time you'll start to notice the algorithm giving you better and better content actual artistic works people put effort into producing now for some of the more devoted slop watchers that watch their daily slop to stay up to date on internet drama i actually have a solution that will not only keep you updated but also save you time i may be the first person to ever actually say this but go on twitter if you're looking for a platform full of negativity, Twitter's the perfect place for you. Like with shorts, I find it so funny that people will actively talk about how horrible Twitter is, yet they'll go on to watch garbage YouTube content with information taken from Twitter. After I start- This kid, bro. This kid sucks. This kid literally sucks. started using the site more frequently, I noticed a dramatic decrease in the amount of Moist Critical and Pyro Live I watched, because the main source these aggregators pull from is just the Twitter trending tab. Five yes, because not everybody has Twitter! So what do they do? They talk about it on their YouTube! What the- Oh my god! Wait, so- So we're not allowed to, like, talk about the news of the internet? What? What the- Get off your- high horse literally get off your fucking high horse you are a little piece of shit oh my god five minutes a day keeps the sloppers away if you don't want to go on twitter which honestly is kind of valid another alternative is to watch self-aware slop tubers channels like chad cat and dolan darkest are channels that deliver the information without wasting 20 minutes of your life obviously they tend to miss some of the finer details and nuances but if you want the full picture obviously you wouldn't watch aggregators to begin with you would just watch the videos they're taking the information from so i don't like this kid i don't like this kid I really do not like this kid. Self-aware slop tubers. Guess what? Most slop tubers are very self-aware. If they will sit there and look you dead in your eye and say, yes, I make slop content, that means they're self-aware. They know what they're doing. Or do you not understand what that word means? Bruh. Spacefish, yes. Didn't he just complain that Pyro was self-aware? Yes. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He literally just complained that Pyro was self-aware that he makes slot content. And now he's saying, go watch self-aware slot content creators. Like what? I don't know why this video needed seven parts, but we're about to watch the last one. That's the slop economy. While I'd love to believe it's possible for the pendulum to swing back the other way to people preferring creative ventures and high effort, well thought out projects, I think the most realistic scenario is that this is just the modern landscape we live in now. At times, it feels all encompassing. And even if this boycott actually causes any sort of effect, which I don't really think it will, even if every human creator completely moved on from slop, there's also the constant oversaturation of AI slop that's only getting more and more common. Okay, I do agree with that. I do agree about the AI shit. Because the AI shit, there's people who are literally stealing other creators' videos. As in, they take everything that creator said in a video and then making it AI and making a video out of it. Now, that right there is just flat out stealing. Yeah, exactly, Chris. Uh, the AI shit is something that people need to, uh, an actual video on. I agree. Because they are literally, I have seen videos where, um, without a crystal ball, um, it was a video on, um, um, what do you call it? Um, My Sister Wives, right? And she had made a little quip about, like, her family or her kid or something. And then, all of a sudden, it, as soon as, because I had autoplay auto on, it went to another video. And I was like, oh, another Sister Wives video. Okay, I'll watch it. And it literally was the exact same thing she said, word for word in that video. They literally took what was in her transcript and put it to AI and made a video out of it. Even the quip about her kid. They just literally copy and pasted every single word she said. Yeah, so those... Those are 100% a problem because they are literally stealing from people. 
And honestly, I don't even want to think about that anymore. I've already said my piece on it. So for now, I'll just leave you with this. Slop isn't going anywhere, so all you can do is try to go away from Slop. Appreciate good creators while you have the- Alright, who's the good creators? H-Bomber guy, of course. Um, Nerd City! <laughs> okay, listen, I actually get along with Nerd City, alright? But I'm starting- I don't know these other people, though. Who are these other people? I don't know these other people. Huh. Okay. Them, lest you let them be part of the ever-consuming YouTube slop economy. I will be honest, I really do hate slop. I really do hate slop. Guess what, kid? Guess what? We're not going anywhere. You know why? People love drama. People love drama. People love reaction, reactionary live streams because they get to hear us talk shit. And people love that shit. They love that shit since the beginning of time. You know, before YouTube was around, there was magazines. And people love those magazines talking shit about, you know, actors and actresses and, and, and bands and stuff. They love those magazines. And that's practically what we do here. We talk shit about the other YouTubers that you know. Yeah, tabloids. Yeah. It's not going anywhere. Either get used to it and, and listen, if you don't like it, don't watch it. But don't you dare point your finger and look down at people who do it. Q. Who the f*** do you think you are? 